and welcome to Project 52, the Saturday morning edition. I imagine we'll have some people from the States joining us on Saturday morning, but I don't think we'll have anybody from the West Coast getting up at 5 a.m., although I've been wrong about that before. We had uh, several um, really wonderful students from Europe in uh, Project 52, the regular Project 52 this past uh, year, and folks like Rasmus and Mac Philippe, and uh, they would they would get up at two in the morning to join us and then go back to sleep. And I thought, you know what, we're going to do our own uh, thing for them. And I don't really care if there's only 10 people in it. I don't care. We're, we'll still do it um, for the folks in Europe, uh, get up and, and make that happen for them. Cause I'd really like to, to bring those guys on board and, and see how it works over there. We've got one European photographer with us today. Uh, we'll talk to Machel at the end of the, uh, he'll be the last guest we have. Mitchell's in Poland. Um, but Project 52 approaches teaching photography a different way than I think most workshops do. Project 52 Pro it combines photography and business together. The goal is by the time we get to the end of the workshop, everybody's got a job. Everybody who wants to shoot professionally and get money for it has gotten a job or at least is ready to make that happen. We have a lot of folks who take the Project 52 Pro who have other things to do. They've got other jobs, full-time jobs that they like, they enjoy. They don't really want to quit their job and go be a photographer. Um, but but they're ready to do it when the, uh, they get to the end of the year. We've got portfolios in place and marketing materials in place and an understanding of business and their asset lists and all of the things that really help you decide what you want to do in this business. We meet once a week. Uh, we meet by then we're going to be using GoToWebinar so that we can record these meetings. If you miss a meeting, no problem. It will be recorded. And this year we are uh, going to make these recordings downloadable. So if you um, you can go always go to the website and view the recording, but if there's something particular that you'd like to have, you can download that webinar. Uh, their large files are going to be 350 megabyte files, uh, but if you'd like to download them, they'll be there for you. Each assignment this this year, each assignment will be accompanied by a video uh, or audio. Uh, discussion about the assignment. So we, instead of just being words on a page, there'll be something from me and an interaction uh, to explain to you what we're talking about in that 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 uh, document. And you will end up with a a, a workbook that's um, at this point it's pure text and it's 200 pages. So by the time um, my design is uh, the designer. Part of me is finished with this document. It'll be a pretty substantial something for you to have. Uh, you can print it out um, and fill it out and print it out again if you want, but it'll be a very substantial thing for you to have for the rest of your photography career. I have uh, I created this document for myself uh, nearly 20 years ago. Of course, back 20 years ago, I didn't have things like email, marketing, um, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, all that, but the the rest of it's still still in uh, in good order. So uh, and we need it. So it's a it's a pretty substantial document, and I think you'll all enjoy it. Um, it's a bit of a, a challenge to to get through it. Project fifty two came about because I was doing workshops um, a couple of years ago, doing a lot of workshops, and at the end of the workshops, we'd all you know go out for. You know, grab a beer, pizza, whatever, and chat. And the questions that would come at the end of the workshop were more like, well, how do I get a portfolio together? How do I find a client? How much should I charge for this? You know, we can teach somebody how to light fairly, um, fairly easily, actually. I think we can teach somebody to light fairly easily. It's, uh, it's the nice thing about light is, like I say, it does the same thing every time. You put a softbox on a light, you're going to get the same light out of that softbox every time. So once you realize that light is manipulative, you can do something with it because you know it's repeatable, then you can go ahead and learn how to light. 
Um, but learning how to do the business. I mean, when someone says, well, how much do I charge for this? It's, that's like a question that has 50 questions before it that have to be answered before we get to that question. And I thought, you know, we've done Project 52, um, which was a blast uh, the first year. Last year was a blast doing the free one, which is all about I give assignments, real world assignments. Guys, gals go out and shoot them. We look at them, we critique them. That's a blast. But what happens um, in this this one is, yes, you have the, the assignments and yes, they're geared towards you. Uh, but they're real world professional type assignments to get you ready to make that leap. And they're accompanied by the business structure behind them that helps make sense out of it all. Um, the, the assignments uh, that I use are, and I call them real world, the assignments that I use are based on assignments that I have uh, received, uh, uh, given out. I was an art director for uh, eight years for a big ad agency. We were the third largest agency in the state, uh, in Arizona. Uh, as half owner and, and creative director for that. So I've sat on both sides of the the desk, uh, both as a photographer trying to get a job from a creative director and a creative director looking at photographers to hire. So that gives me kind of a unique uh, point of view there. So I, I decided that uh, Project 52 would be something that photographers could come to and learn more holistically about this business. Back in the day when I started photography, um, I did not go to art school or photography school or any of those things. Actually, I went to music school um, and I got a degree, which was, you know, it's worth almost, I think now, um, I'm not sure how much a piece of paper with ink on it is, but that's probably what it's worth. I spent a lot of money. Now I see young people going out and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for that same piece of paper. And I just, I hang my head. I just, I just don't get it. Photography is a, an art and a science together. And in the day when I started, I uh, grabbed a camera, thought I was pretty hot, went to, went to LA with the belief that Los Angeles really needed me. I mean, I was a great photographer in Arizona and all the models loved me. So I need to go to, you know, L.A. where everybody really needs my talent. Discovered pretty quickly that no, they really, really didn't need me that much in L.A. They were fine. Um, there were a lot of terrific photographers. So I assisted. I assisted almost every day, nearly every day for three years. Uh, I was a freelance assistant, first freelance assistant uh, in L.A. to have a beeper. Um, if you, and if you don't know what a beeper is, that's okay. Uh, you're just, if you do know what a beeper is and I, we, we know how old you are, uh, first one to have a beeper. And, uh, it was, uh, it was a blast. We worked for, I worked for photographers all over Los Angeles, different kinds of photographers. Those days are almost gone for young photographers. It's very difficult to find assistant jobs. When my studio was in its heyday here and we were doing catalogs just before I opened the ad agency, we were doing catalogs and everything. I had seven assistants. I had a staff of seven people that worked for me. I was the shooter. We had a first assistant. We had a darkroom assistant. We had, like I would call them just gaffers. We had a full-time secretary and an accountant. I mean, it was huge. Um, these days, I, I don't have an assistant. Uh, I don't need a darkroom assistant. I don't need an assistant assistant. I don't shoot every day. In those days, I shot every day. These days, I don't shoot every day. Um, so things have changed. And that part of the business, that assisting part, where you get to learn not only where to put the light, that's one thing, but you also get to learn well, how did a photographer come up with that bid? Or how did, that, how, did he, how did he market to that client? Or how did he find this client? How's his rep? bringing in, you know, clients from places I'd never heard of. Um, there are places all around you that need photography. And yet, if you don't know how to find them, they're just as invisible as, as they possibly can be. There are ways to find those clients and to get out there and, and make sure that those clients know you exist. 
we have in Project 52, the, the regular edition this year, we have a graphic designer. And uh, she is a, quite a good graphic designer. And she has at her website lots of her design that she's done. And almost all of it has photography in it. She's in Connecticut. She has never had a photographer contact her to show their portfolio. When I say never, I mean never. So what's, you know, as, the, as they say, what's up with that? Photographer's complaining about no work. And here's a, here's a client. She has to go out and get stock. Now she's probably not going to get that much stock anymore. She's probably going to shoot it herself. And that's going to be a very interesting thing for her she's she's changing her world but it also means that uh, photographers in her area have lost uh, a possible account to shoot for all i can say it was their fault when i get you to the point where you're finding clients um i think all of the folks online here will uh will agree and and uh jump in and tell you their own um uh, ways of working but it, it is a it's a method that does work and if you use that method and use the methods that we teach you in project 52 you can't uh, do anything but go up it's just uh, not possible it'll be a fantastic experience for you we are keeping it very inexpensive uh for folks it's 15 dollars a month um but i'll tell you what what happens um i want to do this for folks, but I also want those folks to have some skin in the game. Um, Fifteen dollars a month isn't something that's going to hurt anyone's uh, economy, hopefully, but it's also something that gets people to know that they're investing in something. Um, I had a, I've had two or three people say, "Oh gosh, I, I thought it was going to be one hundred and fifty dollars a month," and I thought, well. I mean, if that's what you'd like to pay, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. But no, I, I don't want to do that. I want it to be very affordable. Uh, but at, see, at, at some point where you know that you're you're actually paying for it, that you are investing in it. Uh, next year, I don't know what next year will bring. Um, I really wasn't sure if I was going to do it again this year. Um, it's a big commitment. Uh, I sat down with my wife and my daughter and we talked about it because they're the ones who've had to give up Wednesday nights and uh, that's that's piano nights. The only night we can get a piano teacher with my daughter and it's been kind of a, you know, you have to run and drop her off and get back here for the show and what have you. But we've decided that uh, that's something I like to do so much. It's such a blast for me. So I'm going to stay, stay with it. We're going to do it one more time. So uh, the photographers that have been on Project 52 and gone forward on Project 52, as you'll see in the, uh, this group of photographers that I that I have here today, um, are doing all kinds of different work. It's not a fashion class. It's not a food photography class. It's not a uh, workshop on how to be an architectural photographer. It's none of those things, and it's all of those things. Actually, we want you to become your best photographer in the area and genres that you do. And we really work hard to try to make that happen for you. So um, I have uh, Hiram Chi with us today, Dan Fenwick, Rob Davidson, and Mitchell Blechek. Is that the correct pronunciation, Mitchell? Oh, yes, almost. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Mate, is, it's Mitchell? It's, uh, it's Maché. Yes, it's close, but uh, the, the surname is Blas Blaschuk. Blaschuk, Mecze Blaschuk. Um, so, and uh, and he's in Poland. Let's let's uh, let me introduce these photographers to you, and uh, uh, one by one, and we'll talk, we'll chat a little bit with them. We're going to start with uh, my. Uh, but that's, that, let me let me also say the other cool thing about me doing this is I've met some just fantastic people, and I feel like I have friends all over the country and all over the world. I. Uh, I bet I could show up at Mitchell's, Mitchell's uh, place and we'd go out and have a beer and, and steak. And, uh, I've visited with Hiram a few times. Dan Fenwick, uh, I was going to come up uh, to see Dan tomorrow, but then he told me he had freezing fog. So I thought, no, nah, that can't do that. Uh, Rob is in New York and uh, I like to come back to New York once in a while. So Rob and I 
get together. So it's always a blast to, to meet all these people. But let me introduce you to Hiram Chi. Hiram is in uh, beautiful Santa Cruz, California. Um, he's also a uh, entrepreneur and a surfer. And uh, we call him Bonzer. How you doing, Bonzer? I'm good, thank you. How's how's the weather there in Santa Cruz? <laughs> well, I hate to brag, but I'm looking out the window, <laughs> and it's it's bright and sunny. It'll probably hit seventy, I guess, today. Yeah, it it just must suck to be there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I can't remember asking Hiram how the weather was in Santa Cruz and having him tell me that it was bad. So it's like. Uh, always pretty great. So uh, Hiram got up early this morning. He's over there. He's an hour earlier than the, than uh, I am, and uh, uh, he's uh, he's he's growing as a photographer. Tell us about what you're doing, Hiram. Well, I, I've um, I've migrated uh, from not knowing what I what I like to do uh, to probably in the last year or so focusing more and more on, on people photography in in doing a lot of uh, portrait uh, beauty sort of fashion oriented photography you were um when you first started you were doing all kinds of photography yeah. yes uh, and you've really focused in yeah, yeah. I, you know, initially I was just driven by the assignments, really, and um, just kind of getting my feet wet. And um, as we dialogue about the different styles, uh, I, you know, had no idea, although what what I wanted to do, although shooting with my daughter just kind of focused me on, <laughs> gave me a pathway basically to to get a feel for shooting people. And. Um... Your your style is uh, coming into its own as well, which is very exciting. Um, Thank you. It's fun to see. Uh, and there's your daughter. Yes. Yeah. So when when you started Project Fifty Two, what went through your mind? What did you think um, you were going to do with it? Well, primarily, I wanted to just uh, hone down my my photography skills. Uh, you know, I, I started at a at a pretty basic level, just knowing how to aim a camera and and, and firing the sh the shutter. And uh, and I had had some exposure to you know using a camera in manual with a with a film camera, but. Um, I basically my goal then was to just learn how to make better pictures, and um, stumbling into Project Fifty Two was was uh, uh, I guess an ena uh, it enabled me to learn, but had no idea what I was getting into. Well, that's that's fantastic. Oh, and by the way, the pictures you did of Miranda that I'm seeing now are just amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah. So would, would you uh, recommend Project 52 for photographers who have really just sort of started photography? Oh, without a doubt. I, you know, that was what, what the way that I started. And um, I, it was uh, jumping into the deep end of the pool for me uh, when, I, when I saw what other um, particip participants were doing. But along the way, seeing that work and hearing your critiques I, and uh, being challenged every week by something new moved me down the road pretty quickly, which, uh, which is something that, that I don't think I could have done any other way. Well, you've, you've, uh, you've always been a hard worker uh, with your, your different um, assignments. And it's always fun to see what you come up with. Uh, you really do have, uh, I think, a great eye, uh, Hiram, and, and doing fantastic work along the way. So nice stuff. Let me, um, let me pop over um, to your lifestyle. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say that, that Hiram, when you first started was all strobe, pretty much all strobe. And now um, you're doing more um, 
more and more mixed lights, uh, natural light with strobe, um, just a nice feeling of light. How did you come about that? Is that just a natural progression? Well, it, yeah, I think it's a natural progression. I, um, you know, it was easy, you know, in engineer by training, and it was easy to migrate to using uh, flash. And, and it was, I guess at that point, it seemed that learning how to use strobes was something, what was my, a, a step that would get me beyond where I was. Mm -hmm. And then once I started uh, taking pictures, I realized that that really what I wanted to do is capture things as, as they were, if I could. And then um, so that got me into well, can I can I shoot a picture without having to use a strobe? Um, the other thing that helped is the model that I work with, Pearly Austin. We did a natural light shoot, and she said that she liked those pictures better than anything else she'd seen before. So, so that motivated me to to uh, to put down the strobes for a while, and, and now I think that I'm I'm more balanced in the approach. You 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 pull out the light that you need for the shot you're going to do. Yes. Yep. That's the way to do it. Well, can you hang on for a while? We're going we'll see if there's uh, questions at the end here. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce Dan. Thank you, Hiram. Uh, up okay. next is Dan Fenwick. Dan is in. Um, Reno, Nevada. And uh, how are you doing today, Dan? Oh, pretty good. Bit cold here, but I'm sure our folk in Europe, some of them are cold. Here, so, I imagine it, it, it. I imagine it, we had a cold snap here in Phoenix, where uh, Rob Davidson sent me a note. He says he couldn't believe it. He was like 65 in New York, and it was 38 here, 40 here. Um, that that doesn't usually happen very often where it's flipped around. But uh, well, welcome to the uh, the, the the little uh, broadcast today, and thank you so much for getting up early, Dan. I know it's early for you as well. Uh, Dan is a photographer who uh, is more of a food product. Um, how would you describe it, Dan? Um, yeah, food and product with a little people thrown in. Mm -hmm. After having shot a wedding, I can guarantee you it's less people than it would have been before. <laughs> well, Dan is uh, up there where all the casinos are and uh, is uh, uh, kind of uh, focusing on uh, producing work that they will do, they will use. And uh, tell me about how you got interested in Project 52. What came about there? I was looking for somewhere to learn more and improve my photography and googling around found project 52 a week before you started two years ago ah and it looked like the ticket so I got in and um, showed up and played and have done two years of it now plus a year of the pro that's right you did you did both last year didn't you I did both last year yeah. I missed one assignment because I was too sick to get it done everything else I've managed to Put something in for and I'm years. sorry that brought you down to a B. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of the cool things about Project 52 is there's no grades. There's no grades. And actually, um, with the uh, the free version, I used to, uh, and I still say it, there's no sign up um, and there's no one taking role. It's just like real life, folks. You show up or you don't. Um, no one's going to cajole you or prod you or push you uh, to do it. This is your thing. Um, I want it to stay that way because one of the most important things you can, traits you can have as a photographer, a uh, professional photographer, is self-motivation. If you cannot be self-motivated, working for yourself is not a good idea. You will not have a good experience. Uh, I have worked for myself, well, most of my adult life. Uh, Back right when I was in school, I worked for Safeway for a long, long time while I was building my business on the outside. And after I left Safeway, I pretty much worked for myself. Even the ad agency I owned, uh, I was half owner of it. So, um, you know, I, it's just been me. Um, I've been my boss uh, my whole life, and I, I kind of like it, except that I can tell you that when you work for yourself, your boss is a real jerk. Um, <laughs> 
real hard to call in sick to your boss when you're the boss. So, um, Dan, uh, what what uh, sparked your interest in the um, in the product stuff? When I first met you, you, came to a workshop in Sacramento, right? Yeah, I, that was three months into Project Fifty Two, two and a half months, something like that. And you were kind of all over the place with photography. Yep, I was shooting just about anything that looked interesting. Mm -hmm. um, however, at the time, I had not shot food. I had not done any still life type work. Um, and doing the assignments with that, I found I really like it. What do you it, like it's most interesting, about it? It's fun. What do you like most about it? About shooting? Well, partly, partly you don't have to deal with people to get the shot you want out of it, um, which is always a bonus. But uh, also, there's more challenge to it. You know, how do you make something like you know those desserts there look good? Um, how do you make it look like something somebody want to eat? Um, quite product stuff. How do you make it look like something somebody might want to buy? Yeah, it's it's quite an art. I mean, the first time someone goes out and starts to shoot food, um, and look at looks at the back of the camera or on their Photoshop, they go, "Oh, well, that that doesn't look very good." Um, one of the hardest things you'll ever shoot uh, is pasta because uh, pasta just sucks up the light and just glows and you don't want glowing pasta. Try shooting meat sometime. A, a steak looks like shoe leather in a photograph. So finding out all these little tips and tricks and, and playing with the light and stuff becomes a lot of fun. I like shooting people and I like shooting still life. Those are my two favorite um, subjects. I like the still life because it's kind of like a, you get to tinker with things. You get to fool with it. It goes back to those days when I was a kid building model airplanes or model cars. It's just you're constantly tinkering with the different things that uh, that goes into making the shots. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to jump down here to your product still life thing because I, I love the picture with the uh, the bobby pins taking a little bit of nothing and making a very cool photograph out of it. That's another thing I like so much about uh, still life. Yeah, that was at the uh, Project 52 get together last year. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was here in Phoenix in the, in the studio. You just grabbed yeah, that, it. That, that's that little metal um, makeup table you have back in there. Ah. And the lighting on it is the light reflecting or the lights for the mirrors for the makeup. It'll end up being a nice shot. Sometimes the best shots you ever make are those ones that just jump jump out and jump in your camera. Mm-hmm. I get over here to these these here. You got um, this jewelry and stuff that is uh, harder to do than it looks, isn't it? Oh boy, howdy! Lots <laughs> of white cards. Lots and lots of white cards. Well, it's a uh, uh, nice job, by the way. Nice job Thank on you. that stuff. So what's what's in the works else. for? Dan Fenwick, what um, are you doing? Well, around the regular day job that I'm kind of stuck in at the moment, I'm planning to start getting out and trying to market some of this work. Uh, and with a few ad agencies here in town I want to go talk to. And Project 52 helps you identify those places. Yes. And Yes, uh, we found um, a handful. Some of them, I think, are little tiny uh, one-person operations. Some of them are bigger. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, it's a the good place to start. I'm in a market that makes Phoenix look big, so. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Um, one of the one of the, the nice things about uh, photography, and, I, I, and I'm sure you saw that uh, video with um, Gregory Heisler that we posted over at Lighting Essentials, where he's talking about the difference between photographers today and photographers of you know, ten years ago. Photographers today. Um, can be hired from anywhere. I mean, he was saying some of one of his friends moved to Portland and another one moved to Asheville. These are big time, big, big time New York photographers saying, you know what, I'm, I want out of New York. I want to live somewhere different. And they're able to do that these days. So um, as you get to uh, to a point of marketing your work where you're, you start to go after the magazines, the fact that you're in Reno uh, and can do high quality work, you may get calls from Montreal. Why send a photographer from Montreal to Reno when you're there and you can do the shot? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's a part of the business that's changed drastically for a lot of photographers. And I, I love the way Greg 
Heisler said it. He said, well, you know, that kind of sucks for the, the New York photographer who used to go to uh, Asheville to shoot it, but it kind of was pretty cool for the guy in Asheville who now gets to shoot for a New York ad agency. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we give up. That's the kind of thing I'm hoping for. Yep, absolutely. Well, stick stick around if you can, and we'll see if there are questions. And yeah. we're going to uh, meet Rob Davidson here in New York. Uh, Rob, how are you doing today? Very well, thanks. How are you doing, Don? Good. Is it is it still uh, warm in New York? <laughs> uh, not as warm, no. It turned back to winter yesterday, and today it's it's trying to make up its mind. I think it's about 40 outside right now, so it's not too bad. Ah, well, we're back reversed because it's going to be a beautiful 73 today here. <laughs> So Rob, uh, you you came to Project Fifty Two with a lot of questions. I remember. Absolutely. You were wondering. Uh, first of all, you were in a niche that I don't think you realized, right? <laughs> That's absolutely the case. <laughs> absolutely the case. Yeah, I I was, of course, I'm in New York. So to say that New York is flooded with photographers is certainly a large understatement. Um, everybody's here. There's so many photographers here. There's so many different markets here. And it's really overwhelming and trying to, you know, get something started and find your path was daunting to say the least. Um, and then through our discussions and through Project 52, I, I realized that you know, my background is music and music education. And I've worked for symphonies. I've worked, I work currently for VH1, say the Music Foundation, an organization that helps restore music programs in uh, elementary and middle schools here in the U.S. And um, through talking with Don and through Project 52, I realized there's the answer. If, you know, if you're in New York, you need to focus down a little bit. And this is what I know. This is what I love. Is a, another love of, in my life is music and classical music and music education. So um, why not turn to that and see what we can make of it? It's a, it's a fantastic niche, you know. Um... If uh, an art director needs a photographer to go shoot a hip hop artist, there are hundreds. Yes. But if, if an art director needs someone to go shoot a classical musician, there are far fewer. And I've, are, I've searched and searched, and I found two or three. <laughs> yep. And you are, you know, so nicely positioned there. And what's really, I think, doubly interesting is your focus on music education as well. Um, the niche that Robert's in or Rob's in is, um, so interesting because you get to, uh, you actually have access to some pretty high powered, I would say musicians. And I, I don't want to, um, say anything that may not happen, but you've uh, told me there's some pretty amazing uh, opportunities for you coming up. Yeah. Things are, are starting to line up a little bit and, um, using some of the skills that I've learned through Project 52 of just, you know, just checking back in with people to say, hi, happy new year. How are things going? If you need anything, you know, remember that I'm out here. Um, some things are coming up in February uh, with one of the jobs that I had uh, before I came to New York, I worked for the Pittsburgh Symphony for a number of years and using that relationship, I've, um, you see the gentleman there on the far left in the middle of the screen is the new concert master in, in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, some more work coming from the Pittsburgh Symphony here at the end of February that's coming up that can be very exciting. So there's good stuff on the horizon. I, it's still in the works, so I can't confirm it yet. Well, the work is, uh, the work is just great. Um, that you're doing here is just fantastic. Uh, it's so great to see um, a, a photographer come into their own, so to speak, uh, like you four have. And... Uh, Rob took, did you, you did take a workshop, right? With me. I did. Yeah. Well, was it three or four years ago here in New York? Uh, New York. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then we got, we got again together again for a little, uh, half day, uh, thing. And, yeah. uh, it, it's just so much fun to see this, this kind of work coming from, uh, coming from photographers that I, that I work with here. Uh, and you have, uh, recently gone medium format, right? I have, yeah. About this time last year, I jumped up to medium format, and uh, I haven't looked back. I haven't touched my my thirty five millimeter digital in a little while now. <laughs> you know, you live in New York. Um, you know, Mayor Bloomberg has made a law that thirty five millimeter digital cameras that aren't touched for a year 
will be fined and taxed. So <laughs> if you'd like to send that 5D Mark III over to me, <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch over it and make sure you don't get those heavy penalties. I, I appreciate you looking out for me, Don. That's really that, kind of you. <laughs> that's what I do, Rob. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's actually a law. You can only have a certain number of megapixels, too. They don't sell yes. anything about 40 yes. megapixels. Yes, you can have one 32 gig card. That's uh, right. Yeah, That's it. You can't have a, uh, uh, two 32 gig cards, but you can have four 16 gig cards. I, I don't know. Uh, that's right. <laughs> right. That's bizarre. Go to New York now and you see fat people walking around with two sodas in their hands. I don't know. <laughs> um, well... Tell me what uh, you you sent me a wonderful email about how serendipitously you did one thing, and then it just led into another and another and another. And you don't have to be specific, but would you share that with us? How doing one little something that you did up there at the music camp? Yeah, absolutely. If you um, over on the the blog on the site, Don is a, a post. It's called. It's toward the. Uh, Toward the beginning of the the post, it's called Ken Haven. Um, there's a um, a camp, uh, a summer music camp that happens in Vermont, which is about uh, two and a half hours north of, of where I live. Um, that some friends of mine who are um, orchestra musicians and music teachers and and they're like all of us, they uh, in the music world and the talk world too. We um, you do a lot of things to to get it all done. Um, and this is actually part of that, the outcome of that. Um, they, they run the summer music camp, and um, I had talked to him several times about, you know, the camp and how great it is, and he said it's gorgeous up there. I'd never actually been to the state of Vermont, so it's one of the things I wanted to do in my life. Um, so I, I sent him an email and said, hey, you know, it's, um, it's summertime. I would love to come up for a weekend and just take some pictures. You know, I'm not going to charge anything, but I'd love to come up and see what you guys are, are doing. And, uh, of course, he was very happy with that. I said, you just give me a place to stay and feed me, and we'll call it even. Um, so we did. I went up and I shot, um, I shot some film, which is something I still like to do. Uh, shot some film, shot some digital, just shots of the kids around the camp. That shot on the top right there is from the, the summer music camp, as is the next one on the bottom left. Um, and uh, just gave them to them, you know. Absolutely, for free. You gave me the place to stay. You guys here, there's some great photos for you. The photography that they had been using was less than stellar, but um, they needed some good shots. So I did it, and I, I got some portfolio pieces out of it. It was a win-win. Um, and then what that led to then is the, the blog post, um, Adrian Kim, that you were on just a little while ago, Dawn, um, she's a piano teacher at the camp, and she called me and said, hey, I really like the stuff you did for Ken Haven. I need some new promotional shots. Um, can I hire you to do that? Of course you can. So we, we did that and got some great shots for her. Um, I um, Also, one of the board members of this, the music camp, it turns out, does um, a lot of design work. And she saw the, the shots. She does the, the design work for the, the camp, has been using my photos, and called me and said, hey, we, I need you to... Uh, to bid on a job for uh, some product work for one of my clients. I'd love to have, you know, I love your work and let's see what we can do. So that's happening. Um, I'm also, I got a call back from my friend that runs the camp and he said, the shots are amazing. I, we are so thankful. Our, our marketing is so much better now. We're getting such a better response because we have good photography. So can you come back up for a week this week, this summer, and we'll hire you this time. We'll pay you to come up. Um, turns out he also needs promotional shots. Uh, he's a trombone player, so I'm going to be doing that. One thing after another, just one weekend, so we go up in a little little break from the city, take some photos for some people. It, one thing leads to the next, and I'm getting busy from it. It's And it's interesting when you hear so many photographers saying, oh, we'll never shoot for free, never shoot for free. And on yeah. Project 52, we sort of say, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. There are times when shooting for free makes sense. You know, knowing when to, when to do that is the trick. I mean, not every, I'm not saying everybody go out and shoot for free, but you saw an opportunity to do two things here, to get your work in front of people um, who were influential and also help this music camp that you really believe in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a win-win all the way around. 
Uh, no one used used anybody. No one. Um, I love this kid with the trombone. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's in West Virginia. <laughs> I just love that kid with the trombone. You know, someday someday he'll be like uh, first trombone for the Pittsburgh Symphony or something. I hope he is. I, I do really too. Um, but you know, there there are times when you look and you say there's access, and also um, the fact that I think photographers are gifts. Uh, we we take for granted sometimes what it is that we do but if you're a good photographer you have something that you can gift to somebody you have a talent that you can say hey let me help you do this let me use my talent to help you and um, as a designer and a photographer for most of my life um, i've used my talents to help other people from um, my my agency we always we always had at least one pro bono client going at one time at a time and many many times many many years we had two pro bono clients we always gave back um uh, to the to the community and i think it's a wonderful thing so when you find that little niche that thing that you love uh, in your case music education jump into it and enjoy it and be a part of it and let that community that you love so much um be a catalyst for the growth of your business that's a win-win all the way around absolutely Thanks, Rob. Kind of hang on for a second. We're going to go, uh, we're going to jump all the way over to Poland, I believe. Mecha uh, is in Poland today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Uh, well, you are, um, you're just tearing it up over there in Poland, my friend. Look at all this great work. Tell us about what you're doing now. Well, I have to say, or I have to admit that uh, at the end of Project 52, basically, I had a kind of emotional or photographical breakdown. I called you for that. We had a chat on this, you remember, I think. Yes. And uh, I, actually, I'm going back to the basics now. So uh, I decided to uh, completely get rid of uh, all the studio stuff, etc. I'm going back to the small strobes and I'm shooting... I'm shooting headshots only, as you can see most of my work here is, mm -hmm. uh, is a headshot thing. And uh, I'm going back to the, to the environmental portraiture. So basically all kinds of custom portraiture. This is what I'm currently up to. Mm -hmm. There are a little chat help. Oh yeah, very much. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just want to say, if, if I can take this this moment to say to sure. all the guys that are considering taking P52 Pro, is uh, 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 as I'm not a professional photographer, like I guess all the uh, all the others guy all the other guys are, because uh, uh, my photography is an extra income on the side. I would say uh, this way is that you need a quality lead or your quality mentor and. Don is certainly the right person to do that for you. So this is what I wanted to say. You know, actually, Mitchell, I, Mitchell, I, I think uh, none of the guys on here are full-time shooters today. Ah, okay. Hiram is, um, uh, like I say, is an entrepreneur. He's doing a lot of uh, stuff in the medical industry. Rob is uh, still working at MTV. I'm sorry, VH1. Oh, boy. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be meeting with his boss on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> Dan works for uh, the university, right, Dan? Yes, I do. Yeah, Dan works for the university. So I, typical IT geek. Yep. So most of them are um, are part time uh, shooters, but uh, everyone is doing something professionally and within their within their uh, realm. So. Um, so you're you fit right in. You're also IT, right? Yes, I'm IT. Yes, I uh, I'm a freelancer, and I do freelance jobs in IT. Well, your work is just fantastic. How did you find Project Fifty Two? Well, I would say uh, I could talk for hours about this, but uh, basically, uh, I found on a, by googling, I found uh, uh, Lighting Essentials, uh, your uh, blog about. Uh, Lightning. Then uh, I said to. I, then I decided to go to states and to take her workshops in Virginia in Norfolk in 2010. Mm -hmm. And this was basically the breakthrough because 
the, yeah, then after the whole, workshop next year, I, you took a whole gaggle of workshops, then, didn't you? I think didn't you like take three yes, workshops I, right in a row? Yeah, I went. Well, once you know, if you make a trip from Europe to States, you want to make you know the best of it. So yeah. I, yes, uh, I, I basically went to New York, and there, I went for one light with Zach Arias and uh, Sil Arena, and uh, I went for the PDN Expo. So I also took some seminars with Joe McNally and uh, Kelby Gang, and um, then I went to Norfolk. But uh, the one in Norfolk uh, definitely changed much more for me than the other ones because uh, we had a very good, uh, I don't know if it's the right way to say, a very good chemistry and connection right from the start. So. Uh, in fact, that is very important for me. All the other workshops, yes, they were good, but uh, these are, you know, I mean, these guys are making business out of this, and uh, they are good quality, but you can, you know, or you can see that they are making business out of it. Here at, uh, let's say, at uh, Learn to Light, it was, there was something more, which I very much appreciated. And, and since then, basically, I, I hooked up with Don and the way he 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 teaches and and uh, everything he does. Not only teaching, not only photography, but basically the way he approaches everyday life. It's, it's I don't know something something special. So I I, I signed up for P52 or like the light version the first year, and I have to admit I failed miserably at that one. <laughs> And uh, the next year, when the 52 Pro was launched, then I obviously decided I'm going for this one, and uh, that was great. Well, I'm, I'm glad you came along. Um, you were uh, you were one of the folks that would uh, when you made when you could make the show. It was usually um, wee hours of the morning uh, on work days too. By the way, we we would do our our meetings on Wednesday evenings and when when you'd show up I'd think oh it's like three in the morning or something over there yeah it was three from three to three thirty to four thirty a.m. usually <laughs> god um but you know what's cool about it let me let me say this what's cool about it is if you are committed enough to get up at three thirty in the morning to make a broadcast where your photograph will be one of 50 that's critiqued um that's why your work is where it is now. That's why you are doing um, more and more work. And so many other photographers are still struggling with uh, where they're going and what they're doing. And, and um, that's, that's a big, big thing. That's what I was saying about being self-motivated. You just have to be. You have to say, this, this is what I want to do. Because in photography... There are a lot of people who are today, right today, right now, pulling out their MasterCard and buying a, a 5D Mark III, which are illegal in New York to sit on a shelf, by the way, uh, and a couple of lenses and thinking that they're going to go out and be a photographer and all they need to do is to learn how to use their speed light. And I would say that actually learning how to do your speed lights way down the list, folks way down the list. First, you have to understand the business. When I say the business, I don't mean tax filings or um, how to keep receipts. I mean the business, the philosophy, the underlying psychology of what it is that we do. And uh, we, we talk a lot about that in Project 52. But um, you can certainly see the, the uh, high quality of uh, uh, photographers. And by the way, um, uh, these guys, these four guys today, and we had three last time we did uh, the the uh, webinar last week. Uh, I could do this for weeks and pull in four photographers who um, are just doing wonderful stuff. As a matter of fact, even though this is our last webinar for Project 52 Pro, I plan on interviewing um, a lot of folks. And you guys know who I'm talking about, like Irene and Virginia and um wolfie and all these all these wonderful folks that have just seen their work go from where it was uh to better and some folks started with good work and some folks started with work that wasn't you know quite up to snuff and they busted their butt uh i'm talking about people like gray and 
you know, really busting their ass to make their work better. And it shows. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, turn it over for questions. Uh, and I will I see Flora is here. If you have a question, just type it in a little question there and I will read it off to the guys and they will answer. So um, how are you doing, Flora? I mean, I'm going to unmute you here a second. Right there you are. How you doing, Flora? Samantha. Oh, you're on. You're on live. You can talk into your mic. Oh, she doesn't have a mic. Okay, well, we'll just mute her back up anyway. Um, no questions for these these wonderful photographers. I've never heard Rasmus. Rasmus, how are you? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, and it's very nice to be able to do this in the afternoon. Good, because you you're one of the guys that's been getting up at o oh, dark thirty. Yeah, and, but uh, it's been very few times I have been able to make it that time. Uh, now, you, uh, now you can. Five thirty p.m. Now it's much more better. Excellent. I have a question here from David Travis. Uh, when you're an amateur with no budget, how do you get such great models? Now, I think he's probably talking to Hiram and uh, um, Meche. What, what, what do you think? Uh, either one of you guys. Hiram, you just basically went out and found him, right? Yeah, I initially, you know, I I jumped in on Model Mayhem, and initially that was my vehicle to to get together with models. Uh, you know, sent them emails, and uh, slowly but surely built up my portfolio. Now I don't have to. I I geez, I have a line of models that want to shoot with me all the way out through March. So it now is just sort of is self fulfilling actually. Um, so on. I've gotten to a point where I need to be careful who I shoot with, basically. Mm -hmm. You 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 do. Um, uh, did you? I don't know if you saw that quote from Annie Leibovitz. Uh, the, the, if you have a great sitter, something like if you have a great uh, great sitter, you have to let them be a great sitter. That at, that at the end of the day, nothing beats a great subject. Um, I've I've heard a another photographer say if you want to have really great photos shoot really or really interesting photos shoot really interesting subjects so um it uh pretty interesting Mitchell, how did you find your your models same way um yes we have in poland we have a website which is basically the same as a model mayhem we have it's called max models and uh I also had no experience when I started. Like, like uh, I would say to to, to the uh, to the gentleman that asked the question, like, don't be afraid. Just register there, and uh, make some shots for yourself and of your friends or whomever, uh, and uh, and go for it. And just put the the, the ad in it that you would like to shoot with somebody. And there are plenty of people who are starting as well on those uh, on those uh, websites, and they would they would be happy to shoot with you and trade for uh, for the images. It's all, also uh, um, same. It's it's also the same for uh, for the makeup artists. So you know, I mean, like it's it also took me a lot of courage to you know to register and to go for it because I had no experience when I was starting and and going for uh, for the photo shoots. I I had you know. One camera, one lens, and one speed light, and uh, and one softbox, and uh, uh, it didn't matter. I did some, you know, after, but I was, I have to say, I was determined, and I was shooting like mad. I was every weekend for I think, ten or twelve weeks in a row. I was shooting. Once I managed to get the first model in, then uh, I had my makeup artists. Uh, uh, you know, I found one which was uh, willing to change or to exchange for images, and uh, and uh, I was shooting straight for ten to twelve twelve weeks, and I had some kind of portfolio to start up, and then after the, this twelve weeks, uh, I basically was I was confident enough, you know, to go for let's say more experienced models, let's say, 
and uh, um, also then you become confident yourself in your images and uh, people also get interested if your images are getting better and better and people see th this so they also want to work with you and uh, so th just don't be afraid go for it and it doesn't matter I mean it, we have to start somewhere I mean well, do I agree wholeheartedly with Meisha. That's you know I guess I didn't articulate the method, but that's exactly what I've done. Just not be afraid. And once a few once a few images come out that you're proud of, then your confidence builds, and then it's it becomes easier and easier. That's my makeup artist, by the way. This was the day when the it also happens is you know sometimes models from this uh, websites they don't show up. So uh, if they don't show up, the only way you know to have fun is you know you just say, okay, now so you are now the model, and there you go. This was the day when I was shooting my makeup artist. It's you know what it is. It's just one of those things where you're absolutely right. It's you got to go and have fun with it. One of the the little tricks that I would say is to shoot your friends, shoot anybody that you can get in front of your camera to make the most interesting photographs that you can. Then you get a few models and always try to find a makeup artist. Once you find a makeup artist that, that and be honest, I, I, I don't think that there, anything is, is accomplished by you trying to oversell your accomplishments. And sometimes it's nice to say, hey, you know, I'm just starting out. I'm, I'm just trying to give this my all. And, and if you're starting out as a makeup artist, why don't we team up? Um, because then makeup artists, they come into contact with more model potential than you do. And so then the makeup artist will call and say, oh, I've got, I just did the face on this girl and she's wonderful. Can we shoot her? That's, that's what I did. I, I hooked up with a wonderful makeup artist and she uh, helped bring me models from uh, agents, model agencies that I had never even gone in and, and uh, been able to get on the test list for, but they'd come in the back door with uh with my makeup artist and then the, the agency would then call and say, Oh, I love this work. Can you shoot for us? That's how I did it. Got a question from Flora and she has a mic now. How are you, Flora? Good afternoon. I'm fine. Hi. Hi everybody. Um, yes, I have a question. I want to make you laugh because you were talking about sites where you can find models and it's, it's really, you, there are these sites in Sweden too. And a great thing is that I try to apply and I don't get in because they think my picture is not good enough. The picture of myself. Ah. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if, if you register as a photographer, you have to show a picture of you and it has to be as good as possible. And they refuse me because they think my profile picture is not good enough. So I had to find my, my way and finally I have some colleagues and friends who are posing for me. And and my question now because you know you start something and a new problem comes out, and a new problem is yes we can pose for you but we are as bad as one can be with the makeup, and now the problem is wow the makeup artist and you are talking about makeup artists mm -hmm. but I cannot reach I don't know how to reach them and if I have to start my question is is it better to to tell my my colleagues and friends who are becoming my models to do the makeup. It doesn't matter if it is not the best or should I take the picture without makeup and do something in Photoshop yes. afterwards. That's what I, I mean I'm good that. at Photoshop. I'm really good at Photoshop, but That's I, I don't know. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, just one thing more. I don't know in front of a person who's not a real model who says, I pose for you because you ask me but it is really uncomfortable if I say, and you should not have makeup either, how uncomfortable it, it is going to be for my model, finally. Are you with me? What you do is you have them do the eyes and the lips, a little bit of powder. Um, the only thing that's worse than no makeup is a bad makeup artist. I would rather I agree. do the makeup myself in Photoshop than to have to sit and fix bad pancake or um, multicolored crap where it's dripped into the eye the area. Just it's just terrible. 
So bad makeup artists are worse than no makeup artists. And so if you're going for uh, um, uh, shots like, well, we're looking here at, at Machel's, like this shot here, I would go for these kinds of shots to get in uh, and, and save trying to do, well, here's a real pretty natural, natural makeup. Natural. Um, and save the, the highly made up, what I call the model mayhem look where, you know, everything's all glossy, glitzy. Save that for down the road. The most important thing is to get into it. So go with a more natural look. As far as your models, um, uh, let them be real comfortable in front of the, the camera and, and um, always, always make it worth their while. So explain to them why you want them to do just very light makeup. Uh, lips are important. Lips are hard to do in Photoshop. Uh, eyes, uh, not so much. It's not hard to do in Photoshop, but I still like my models to put a little bit of eyes on. And then I just have them powder. Everything else I'm going to fix. I'll fix it myself if that's what I have to. I prefer to have a wonderful makeup artist. We all would prefer that. But if that's not what you can get to get into starting this, that's the way I would go. Does that make sense? Well, it Yes, it does, and 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 you are totally right because if them those few times I had real models, they had a makeup artist, they knew someone, they always know some. Even designer, I work with a designer once, uh, wedding clothes and things like that, and she had a makeup artist she worked with. So it it, mm -hmm. it, it might not be my problem, but I have to start somewhere. And if they don't think your profile picture is good enough, then have have uh, get a photographer and together with you and have that photographer shoot you, do a wonderful shot of you, and then you do a wonderful shot of them for their their picture. I don't think I really don't. I, I actually I have no idea why they refuse my picture. It's always something about the megapixels, and I think it's stupid. It's extremely stupid. It has to be blah 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 megapixel, and I don't know if. Um, or 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 it is this is too dark and this is just a profile. I don't see both eyes. I have no idea why it has to be that complicated to hmm. come in. But I think eventually we'll make it. And 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 I need your help absolutely to learn how to make self portraits that work too. Mm -hmm. Because it's extremely hard for me to be in front of my camera. I'm always out of focus, always. Well, I I, um, I don't do self portraiture. I, there's a restraining order from. Well, it's a long story. It's it's a it's a difficult business sometimes to understand. I uh, watched a, a photographer friend of mine try for weeks to get into iStock photo and they kept saying uh your your files have noise in them and at the time he was shooting the the absolute top of the line camera on a tripod at iso uh 100 um and you know i mean if there's there was no noise at all but he just tried like crazy i kept saying it was a sign from god don't do iStock don't do iStock but he finally got in and then later he told me i should never have done iStock uh, you think so well, I'm going to, um, there's no more questions. I'm going to uh, say thank you to all my my folks. And uh, I appreciate it so much that they came on. And guys, if you'll just hang out while I, uh, uh, I uh, actually, no, I can't. When I kill it, we'll, we'll lose everybody. So uh, I thank everybody for coming today. If you're interested in Project 52, um, whether it's the free one or the pro one, just head up to project52.com forward slash experience and you'll see all the information there so thanks and uh to Hiram and dan and rob and Mechez, thank you so much guys appreciate you coming you're on. most welcome yeah thank, my you. Pleasure. thank you very much all right good good day now bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. bye.